I want y'all to give it up for Apostle Jeannie Cooper. Thank you, thank you. We are honored, honored, honored to be here. This is, you guys, this, this place, this feeling, this atmosphere is not everywhere. Let's, let's pray. Let's just pray really quick. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the fire. Thank you for the river. Thank you for the wind of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for what's blowing through this place. God, I praise you today. I pray, Father, for every one of our minds to be clear. I pray, Father, for our hearts to be plowed and ready for the word of God, Father. We break up fallow ground today in the name of Jesus. Hmm. God, let us, let us be different. Let us just be different. I just pray, Father, for everyone in this place to have visions when they leave this place of doing great things for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Those of you that's, that does not know us, we live in a little town. Um, we call it Tank Town because it's full of oil. Um, Doug prays over the oil because the oil goes all over the United States. And um, we, we, um, we started in ministry back in 2009. Um, and I'm just telling you a little bit about us before I tell you what it is that the Lord's laid on my heart. Um, we went... The thing, the thing that happened to us was we wasn't raised in church, neither one of us. Um, we started a church, got saved. God healed our marriage in the early 90s after filing for divorce because God can fix anything. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We, um, we, began, we, we began attending church and attended church for several years, and I began to be hungry I began to be hungrier for what we were serving up every week, and I began to be hungry and search out things. And one night I turned the television on, couldn't sleep, and it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and the ramp was on. And uh, I sat before the TV and bawled and laid on the floor like a baby. And that was in like 2001 or 2, something like that. Um, I remember I, we was in leadership at our church. I taught adult Sunday school. Doug was on the board. We did our church thing. And I remember back in the VHS day, <laughs> taping the ramp on VHS, and I took it and showed it to our pastor, and he was like, mm-mm. <laughs> I told him, I said, I honor you. I honor my pastor. And I said, okay. But something clicked on the inside of us. We woke up. Um, one of the things that happened was we be, the hunger became intense. If you're not intensely hungry, something's wrong. We become so intensely hungry. And in 2009, we started the gate. Um, that was the first year that we started the ministry. That's also the first year we actually got to physically go to the ramp. And um, since then, we've just not turned back. We've not slowed down. Don't plan on it. Amen. Amen. We, I did not start preaching until I was 48 years old. Um, sometimes the enemy will try to keep you so distracted, and I feel a lot of distraction on some of you. Sometimes the enemy will try to keep you so distracted because he's so uh, scared to death of you. Um, I began preaching at 48, and that's when we started the gate, and it's been a little over a year ago. Um, tried to pastor for about six years, very frustrated with being a pastor. I praise God for pastors, but I was not one. Um, loved people, wanted to serve God, wanted to serve the kingdom, but something was missing, and we shut down our ministry, completely shut it down. We thought we were done. And um, after six months of deep depression and just being attacked and, and um, just really not leaving my home, I put my Bible up, I quit. I was, I was completely done. Out of the blue, I get a message, ping, Joe Dawson. I was like, what in the world? He said, what are you guys doing? I just started bawling and telling him all this stuff that was going on. And he said, let's talk. And I'm going to tell you, when God heals things, he heals it good. Amen. Let me tell you, there's something on the inside of you that somebody needs. And the enemy will try to get you to a place to where you don't believe that there's anything that you could do that could help anybody else. And I want to tell you today, this is the word that the Lord gave me for Roar Church Texarkana is something I've never heard the Lord say before. 
as soon as Apostle Joe asked me, I, I began to just seek after something. I'm like, okay, God, I, this is an opportunity that I really want to sow into this place. I really want to deposit something there. And the Lord just dumped this exactly in my lap, just like, wow. I've never heard a word from the Lord like this before. So I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited for Texarkana. I'm excited for this region. Amen. The Lord is giving Roar Church permission to release the fresh. This is, this is exactly what I heard the Lord say. He said, I'm giving Roar Church permission to release the fresh wind of the Spirit. And the fresh wind of the Spirit is needed in this region, not because, not because, you know, everybody's wrong. It's because there's people out there that love God that doesn't realize that they're asleep. And they love God. They're trying to serve God. They're doing the best that they can. Pastors are out there working, laying on their face, praying for their flock. And they need a fresh wind of God. Amen. Roar Church, you're going to come in and you're going to bring the fresh wind of the Spirit of God and it's not going to be just for you. It's going to be for this region. Amen. This is what I heard the Lord say. The Lord is giving Roar Church permission to release a fresh wind into the atmosphere of Texarkana. In John 3, I'm going to start in John 3. I don't have but a couple of scriptures or so, but this is what... This, sometimes I feel like that people... When they come and they, they listen, listen what I'm saying. When you're awake, when you've been awakened, you can read anything out of the word and it means something. Amen. 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 Anything. It's all good. Amen. 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 We're going to be in John 3 and I'm using the New uh, Living Translation. John chapter 3, Jesus is, is, he's speaking to Nicodemus in this, in the first part of John chapter 3. He's speaking spiritual language to a natural thinker. Okay. In, in verse 3, it says this, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Verse 5, Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. My tra passion translation says this, spirit wind. We know that the word spirit means wind. Same word. Verse 6, it says, Humans cannot reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to the spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. Verse 8, the wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people can be born of the Spirit. Verse 8 here, the wind or spirit blows wherever it wants. Think about that. The wind or the spirit blows wherever it wants. Nobody can stop it. No thinking pattern can stop it. No stronghold can stop. Amen? The word blows here also means breathe. To breathe. The spirit breathes wherever it wants to. Amen? Amen? Later on in verse 12, Jesus begins to hone in on this revelation. He says, if you do not believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can I, you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? And we all know this principle. The principle is whatever is born of the natural births more natural. Whatever is born of the spirit births more spirit. Amen. So now I want to go on further to another place in John, John chapter uh, 20. And I'm going to stay in the New Living, verse 21 and 22. And Jesus said, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Greek word breathed here is the same word breathed in Genesis 2-7, where God breathed into the nostrils of Adam. Okay? There's a connection here, y'all. Because that breath, that breathing of the Spirit, that breathing wind. In Acts 2, when he breathed, it was for power. But in John 20, he breathed for life. It is to, the breath of life. That's what Roar Church is exhaling into, this tech, into Texarkana. It's the breath of life. Amen? 
The Passion Translation says it this way, the mighty wind in Acts 2, like I said, is for power. But the breath here in this verse means life. It's the breath of life. Jesus said, just as my Father sent me, I am now sending you. And this is what the Lord said. This is an apostolic breath. This is an apostolic thrust of the wind of the Spirit to go. It's an apostolic mandate that needs to be released. And it's finally here in its roar church. When the fresh breath of the apostolic wind is released and sent, people will feel life and the awakening that comes with it. They're going to feel it in this region. Remember, the, the spirit and wind can blow wherever it wants. Nothing can stop it. So it doesn't matter what the, and if we would listen to this, get our minds right. It doesn't matter what attack comes, what the enemy tries to do. He can't stop you. He cannot stop you. It's a fresh breath of the supernatural life that's being released here. And this is what the Lord is saying about Roar Church. The church of today, the people of God of today, need a fresh wind to blow away religious strongholds. There's some things that won't move religious strongholds. But this is going to move them. This is going to move them. Religious patterns that have been tattooed on the church. How many know tattoos don't change? Tattoos don't move. This is going to blow, blow away some things that's been there for years and years and years. The roar of the wind has been released. A fresh wind, a fresh breath of life has been sent. That's an apostolic mandate. The apostolic wind is here. Amen. There's people that are, have been waiting for this kind of breath of fresh air. This is, this is something people have been praying for and it's finally here. Amen. Something fresh and different. Something that rocks religious boats and messes up church as usual. That's what I've prayed for for years. Something that messes up religious mindsets. I wasn't raised in church. I don't know what it's like to be in religion until I got into the church and I began to understand, oh, that's what that is. That's what it is. And these were good people. They're good people. They just don't know. Recently, we were going, we started a, a, a Bethel um, teaching series called God is Good. Bill Johnson used an example of what's happened, and I didn't have this in my notes, but I feel like it, that I need to, uh, to release this to you. In this book, he's talking about how people get stuck with same. And he's talking about how there was this, there was the building program going on in this church and they was building on this big addition to the church and the pastor was there and he wasn't, he wasn't skilled in any kind of carpentry skills at all, but he wanted to help. And so he was, they, he came in and he says, is there anything I can do to help you all to get started the next day? And they said, well, you know what? He said, we're going to do a whole new, um, uh, put up a whole new wall. He said, see that stack of, of boards there? We need every one of those, a hundred of them cut to exactly eight feet. So he's like, I can do that, I can do that. So they all went home. He stayed as a good man of God and worked till late at night to do this. What he did was he measured out the first board at eight feet and marked it and cut that off, eight feet. But he put his measuring tape down and he used that board and he laid it on top of the next board. And then he cut that one 100 times. So at the end of this, he had some boards at the end almost nine feet long. But see, this is what happens. We use the same pattern year after year. And this is what this is what this this is what this lulling spirit has done. The sameness. People of today have produced stagnant, stuffy places. And is in desperate need of a breath of fresh supernatural wind. And God has granted you permission, Roar Church, to release the wind. I believe I've been, I was sitting over there in worship and I'm like, I can feel it, God. I feel the wind. I can feel the wind. Amen. It's going to get windy in here. It doesn't matter where, the wind is in you. The wind is in you. And everything that the enemy's trying to do to shut you up is because he's trying to stop that wind. He's trying to stop the freshness. He's trying to stop the new. Amen. The freshness that transforms the ch and changes thinking, supernatural, from natural thinking to supernatural thinking, comes by the wind of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. 
renewing minds, causing movement in a stagnant, stuffy atmosphere. Amen? Amen. The religious spirit does not invite change or anything new. A renewed mind grants permission for that next level of new. We're always searching for the new revelation, the new side of God that we haven't seen yesterday. We're always going after something new. There's always movement because air is meant to move. Amen? A renewed mind is not stuck. It invites movement. People become comfortable in these environments that never change. This is where we was when we got connected with the ramp. We was we got comfortable in the environment of, that never changed. They're comforted by knowing they can depend on it to always be that way. It's always that way. Therefore, in their comfort, they fall asleep. They shut down the possibility of transformation. It closes off the opportunity for anything new. Because it takes no imagination, no dreaming, no prayer for repetition to happen. It's just an automatic yeah. autopilot. Amen? Amen? This also, what happens is this produces a magnet and it causes more people to come in and be lulled to sleep. Natural attracts more natural. Amen? Maybe, maybe their own life is so crazy that they, they look for unchanging environments. Maybe that's, that feels the best to them. But I'm going to tell you, this is changing. This is changing. Amen? In these environments, there's no pushing for movement. They can relax in their conformity. There's no new wind of the Spirit to move the leaves of lethargy. Everything just stays. Amen? So what happens is same seems right. We begin to recognize it as that's the way it's supposed to be. We lay the board every week on the same Thing. Amen. Repeat gets reproduced over and over. People breathe in the same over and over every week. Breathe in the same environment, the same thing that they said last week. They breathe it back in the next week. However, this is what the Lord said about Roar Church. There is coming a remnant of people that are tired of same. <laughs> tired of the dreamless world that stagnates itself with no new thoughts. These are the ones that invite transformation. Interceding for it even. Have you ever laid on your face and just asked, God, I want more. I need more. I love that when, I, when Amanda did that because that's what this is about. It's wanting more. You have to get sick of same. You have to get sick of being asleep. You have to get sick. There's no time should you ever encounter God and not feel it. There's no time when you should ever be able to sleep through Something that God is trying to say to you and it feel okay for you to just hear half of it. Because we're not awake. You guys are waking people up. Yes. These are people that love God in this region. These are people that are hurting. These are people that are searching. They just don't know what they're searching for. And the wind of the Spirit out of this place is going to come into this region and it's going to wake people up. Yes. Amen. Amen? This invites transformation. Dreams that stretch the heavens, that's the way people like us think. Let's stretch heaven. God said one time at the ramp, uh, he started stretching me about some things, and he was like, I'm stretching you, I'm stretching you. I'm like, I feel you, God, you're stretching me. He said, but I can feel everything I stretch. Don't worry about it. See, this is what the wind of, uh, is going to do in this place. It's going to begin, you guys are in a year, if you will connect to this, if you will connect to this place, if you'll connect with this movement, if you'll connect with this, in a year you won't recognize yourself. A year goes by, you will not recognize yourself. Amen? Mm -mm, Jesus. That's the kind of place I want to be around. I want to be around places where people say, I don't know what I'm doing, but God said do it, let's do it. Let's just do it. Amen. Oh, God is so good. People's minds are renewed as they make room for change. And every time they make room for change, their obedience causes more change to come. And it's not all about our change. It's about people that are around us, in our families, our friends, this region. Mm. Spiritual will attract spiritual. Deep is calling unto the deep ones. And people can begin to go into the deeper things of God because somebody decided to go into the deeper things of God. 
breaking strongholds, breaking levels that they've been on for 20 years. Amen? So let's think about this. What has all this breathing in the same air produced? What has same produced? The truth is we cannot survive in an environment that is stagnant because we cannot breathe. We cannot breathe in stuffy places. We cannot breathe in where it's stuffy. Breathing in the same air constantly, consistently causes carbon monoxide poisoning. You can be poisoned. There's no new wind. There's no new wind of the spirit. Nothing fresh. Just same. There's carbon monoxide poisoning. It's amazing. So these poor people are poisoned from this horrid sameness until they're spiritually unconscious. Listen to this. I just looked this up. And it says that this is some of the symptoms where there are high levels of carbon monoxide gases in the natural realm. Let's think about it in the effects of it in the spiritual realm also when I'm reading these symptoms. Headaches. Headaches. You can't do nothing when you have a bad headache. You can't think straight. Amen. Headaches. Short of breath. Personality changes. Unusually emotional behaviors. Extreme swings in emotion. Fatigue. Dizziness, clumsiness, difficulty walking, vision problems. Come on. Confusion, impaired judgment, irregular heartbeat, and the list goes on and on and on. And if a person stays in this poisonous environment, they develop lifelong health problems. It's not temporary, it's lifelong such as heart disease, neurological problems, and the list goes on and on and on. And listen to this. If a pregnant woman is exposed to this poisonous environment, it can cause a miscarriage or birth defects or even the death of a baby, which completely shuts out the possibility of leaving a legacy. Why are we in the kingdom? We are here to leave a legacy. I, I'm, I pray over my grandkids. We have four grandkids, and I pray over my grandkids that they don't have to wait till they're 48 before they know who they are. Amen. We've got a six-year-old granddaughter, and she'll lay hands on anybody and pray about anything. Father, in the name of Jesus. She knows who her father is. She knows that she's got fire on the inside of her because she gets in environments where we're hungry for the move of God. Same, will not do it. It's just not going to do it. Amen. So, so a pregnant woman is in this environment and it, and it kills the chances of leaving a legacy, causes birth defects. All kinds of terrible things can happen to, to a pregnant woman. All from being poisoned by the effects of nothing fresh. Nothing new to breathe. Amen. We need a move of God. We need the fresh wind of the Spirit. We need something fresh to live off of. This religious spirit will suffocate us with same. This is another aspect of it. It acts as a Botox to the expression of revival. The Lord said it's like Botox. Botox, it, it takes the expression of revival off of our face. Our faces are frozen in the same expression of yesterday. Never allowed to show a response of any spontaneous movement. Never allowed to have any kind of prophetic change of expression. Frozen into yesterday. This lulling spirit will shut off the prophetic flow because it would rather have the familiar than the fire. This is the thing that happens in houses of God. We've got to stop it. They deserve a move of God. It's not about us gathering all in one place and and laughing and going, we've got what they don't have. Ha, ha, ha. No, they need a move of God. And they need us to move. They're suffocating. And if you love God, you'll love people and you'll breathe on these people. And you'll say, I've got what you need. And you take it to your church and you begin to breathe it out in your church. Amen. That's why your church is here. That's why it's here. You, you guys, this is not usual. This, is, this, this atmosphere in here, this is not usual. I can't say that enough because I want you to understand something. Steward it well. Yes. Steward it well. Take care of it. Amen? Yes. 
evidently God has confidence in Apostle Joe and Autumn for planting this here. God doesn't give things out that he knows you can't handle. Amen? So steward it well. Also, Botox was invented to erase the expression of maturity. So this religious spirit won't allow anybody to really get to a mature spiritual life because it doesn't take any maturity for same, for the same old thing. Amen? Amen. Spiritual death by suffocation is safer and less messy. But we're called to, to, we're not called to just suffocate and die off and be clean about it. We're called to find giants and take their heads off. That's what we're called to do. We're called to be cutting some giants' heads off. We're called to be messy. Revival's messy. That's one of the first things I learned. Revival's messy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, this is the, when you get in movements like this, you get in movements like where there's, where there's the move of the Spirit, when there's awakening and revival, you get in this kind of spirit, you get in this kind of movement, and, and it doesn't, just doesn't seem to bother you when the enemy starts making all these threats. It doesn't, it's just a challenge for people like us. We need to have calloused hands from swinging that thing, ready for another giant to come at us. We need to be ready at all times. Amen? But it comes through another area. My saying is, David smelled a lot like bread and cheese before he ever swung anything. It takes faithful people. It's going to take faithfulness. Because your faithfulness doesn't depend on you just getting up the ladder in ministry. It depends on those people dying from suffocation. It depends on you. Yes. Amen? Yes. It's time. It's time. It's past time. We have a lot to do. Yes. I was sitting, we would sit in church after have experiencing awakening just on our televisions, just watching the ramp. Didn't know, did not know that being in an environment like that even existed. Didn't even know it. I remember going to the ramp one time, I'll never forget this. We had a fire tunnel. And Doug's in back of me. No, no, he was in front of me. I thought, okay, I know how this is going to go. They start at, the, start at the end of it. Okay, he gets through about two or three people, and then he's, he's gone, glory hound, out. They drag him off. He's just pump, pump down, the, down the altar. Pump, 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 pump. They just drag him off and lay him over there. And so I'm like, okay, I don't want to do that. i got to get to the end. And so I'm going through, and they're anointing me and praying for me. I get to the end of it, and I go and flop myself down in a chair. And there was these two little girls, about 15 and 16 years old, laying on the floor in front of me. And they were balled up in little fetal positions, and they were crying out. They was, both of them, all they could say was, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And I could just see the freedom, the, the things that had just broken off of them through this fire tunnel. And I said, that's what I want to live for. That's what I want to live for. I want to live for places that burn. I want to create wind. I want to go wherever I go that the wind of transformation follows me wherever I go. We can't afford same people. We can't afford religious strongholds. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. People are suffocating. Don't you ever close your mouth when God releases something to you to say. Don't you ever keep your mouth closed. There's something on the inside of every one of you that somebody needs. The wind of the Spirit of God is in you. And the enemy is going to tell you all kinds of things. He still tells me things. You don't know what you're doing. What are you doing here? So I told Doug last night, how did I get here? Because the devil wants to stop you. He wants to absolutely shut you down. He wants to keep you in that, in that comparing thing where you compare. I'm not that person. I don't talk like them. I don't look like them. I can't preach like them. I can't talk to people like they do. I can't do that. No, the devil is a liar. He is a liar. Bill Johnson said, when you agree with a lie, you're empowering the liar. We can't afford to listen to that stuff. We can't afford to agree with things that doesn't further the kingdom of God. Because there's something on the inside, even to the youngest one here. I can look at kids praying. I can look at kids worshiping. And oh my, it's the fresh wind. They don't have a religious bone in their body. They don't care what people think. They don't care. 
We have to get over ourselves, people. We got to get over ourselves. Do you know? Do you know what worship is? Worship is just an, it's just an extension of who you are at home. Worship is only good when you do it at home, and you do you get up here and you you worship, whether you feel like it or not. Not because you deserve it, because He deserves it. And it causes, what it does is it causes a tornado of the wind of the Spirit. It just, you can feel whenever worship starts, it's like, whew, here it comes. Here it comes. Jesus. Can we get uncomfortable long enough if it means other people can breathe? Because all this environment, what it is, it's, it's all of us laying on our face, spending time in prayer. Not learning how to grow churches, spending time in prayer. Yes. Getting before the Father. Amen? Yes. It's time to take a deep breath and inhale. Miles Monroe said one time, this is what he said. He said, God is sitting in heaven, and when people are worshiping, he, he inhales the worship. Yes. And he exhales revelation. Some of us aren't getting anything because we're not worshiping. Some of us are stuck in religious patterns and we can't worship. That's going to be broken in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you, this is what I'm saying. My, this is what I teach at the gate. I teach your life, the consistent things that you do, the consistency of your fire, the consistency of your hunger for God, the consistency of you seeking after him, that creates a path and your kids will follow that path. Where are you taking them? Where are you leading them to? Amen. I'm believing for great, great things for my grandkids. I'm believing some yes. crazy dreams for my grandkids. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I want to live a life that causes them to be hungry constantly for God. Amen. Yes. God has found a people that will release the fresh wind of the spirit. Fresh revelation, fresh anointing is being released. People's not going to know where it comes from. They're not going to know where it's going. They're just going to feel it. That takes humility. It takes humility to release the wind of the Spirit and then step back and say, I don't know where that come from. We need to get over ourselves, people. We need to get over ourselves. You, you, don't need to, you don't have to take credit for somebody falling out when you pray for them. You don't have to take credit when you get around somebody and they feel the fire of God. Just step back and let God burn them up. Yeah. Don't try to take the credit. Just let them burn. Yeah. That's one of the things that's really messed up the church today is everybody wants to be noticed. But this is a wind that nobody's going to know where it's coming from and where it's going. They don't know where it's coming from. They didn't know what, what was that. What was that? I just walked in a room. What was that? Well, somebody from Roar just went through there. Listen, this is what, I'm, I'm going to ask you to do some crazy thing. I'm going to ask you to think like you carry heaven on the inside of you, because you do. You, you, you pray for open heavens in here. The thing about being open, having an open heaven is that's our resource. That's where we pull all this in from. It's our resource. And so whenever we walk into a place and we take that, that the characteristics some people, like she was saying, can't even think right about God. They can't think rightly about the Father. Bill Johnson, was he was saying, he said, if you don't know God, he said, Let's just read through the Gospels and every bit of the nature of Jesus is the nature of God. And Jesus went about doing good. This is the thing that's going to happen. People are going to start getting around you and they're not going to understand what is it about you? What is it? What is it? This is the thing about apostolic too. They're not going to just say it about Apostle Joe and Autumn. They're going to say it about you. They're going to say it when you walk in. It's going to be awesome. It's already started. It's already started. Texarkana, just take a deep breath. Amen. I know that Texarkana cannot hear us in the natural, but they're going to feel us. Amen. They're going to feel what's going on in the spirit. They're going to feel the fresh wind of the spirit. They're going to feel it. And some of you may have to start by just laying on your face and asking God to show you. This is, this is what's cool about the apostolic. 
I always tell our people, I'm, I'm an apostle. If I send you, what am I going to be sending? It's not, I can't send you somewhere if you're just going to be the same as them and not have anything extra. You've got to get in your prayer closet and find out what it is God has for you. Don't wait for your leaders to do it all for you. Find you a place. Hide and hear. Hide and hear him. Amen. I just feel like everybody needs to, to just stand up because we're going we're gonna to release something right now that's just fresh. Thank you, Lord. If you're tired of the same in yourself, you're here for a reason because God is calling you out. God's calling you up. Somebody in your life, somebody that's in your family, somebody at work, somebody that you know needs what's on the inside of you. You hold the key. You hold the fresh breath. You hold it within you. And I just want you, if you would, I know this, this is what I have everybody do at the gate, but I just want you to surrender and to surrender, you just raise your arms and just say, God, I surrender. Raise your arms and I want you to just take a deep breath because God is going to pour something out. Jesus. I've come against and break every spirit of rejection right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. Every doubt, all the doubts right now go in Jesus' name. We just ignite hearts today, God. Blow in this place, Holy Ghost. Just begin to pray right now. Begin to pray. If you pray in the Holy Ghost, pray.